Welcome back Sharks. This is the first foot notes for the Wave unit. Um, this notes is going to be all about the key vocab. Um, the first part of Waves, you have to understand keywords and key parts of Waves to, in order to successfully pass this section of the unit, you have to know these words by heart. First word is Wave. Waves transfer energy, which is known as a disturbance, not matter from one place to another. I underline energy, not matter, because a lot of people think that matter is transferred, but it's not. Uh, sometimes it's transferred through matter, but it doesn't mean that it is transferred. So it's the energy going from one place to another. That's what a wave does. The next is medium. Medium is where it connects to our matter unit. Uh, a medium is any matter that waves travel through. So this could be the air for sound or the air for light or your body when you feel an earthquake rumble. So endless possibilities of what mediums could be. Um, not all waves need a medium, but if they do use matter, it's called a medium. The next is a mechanical wave. This is going to have several bullets, so don't just put the first one as the biggest one. Mechanical waves is one of two types of waves. There's two types of waves, and mechanical waves is one of those two types. Either a wave is mechanical or it's EM. So one of two types. These waves transfer energy through matter. So if it's going through matter and they need matter, it's a mechanical wave. Now, EM waves can, can go through matter, but they don't need it. So the third bullet here would be that mechanical waves need a medium. Um, without a medium, a mechanical wave would not work. This is why if you're out in space and you're trying to yell, you make no noise because there's no medium for the sound to vibrate off of. The next word is electromagnetic wave. I'll also refer to this from now on as the EM wave just to save myself some time. This is the other type of, it's not matter, correct that, it is type of wave. This is the other second type of wave. These waves transfer energy through a field or empty space. So these don't need a medium. That'd be the last bullet. They don't need a medium, but they can use one. Actually, there's not a last bullet, there's one more. There are seven types of EM waves, and a lot of these you already know. Radio waves, microwaves, infrared waves, visible light, ultraviolet, x-ray, and gamma. These are, this will probably be the longest slide you have to know, but there's two types of waves, EM or mechanical. A wave is either one or the other. They cannot be both, so keep that in mind. The next is the two types of wave movements. A lot of people get confused between types of waves and wave movements. Transverse is one of two types of wave movements. This is a wave movement in which the energy goes perpendicular to the direction of the wave, meaning if it's moving straight, the energy is going up and down. Um, this can be both either a mechanical or EM wave. However, all EM waves travel as transverse wave movements. So if it's an EM wave, it has to be transverse. Mechanical can be one or the other. The other type of wave movement would be longitudinal or compressional wave. They mean the same thing. This is one of two types of wave movements. Uh, I left that blank for those people that just like to copy the slides down. It's the other type of wave movement. It's a wave movement in which the energy travels in the same direction as the wave, uh, unlike a, a transverse wave where it's moving up and down. If this uh, wave is moving straight, the energy is moving straight with it. And this is only found with mechanical waves. A great example of longitudinal waves is sound. Next thing we're going to get to is parts of waves. Some of these parts will be for transverse only, some will be in transverse and longitudinal, and um, I'll in each slide I'll to describe which one is in which part. So crest is the first. This is part of transverse movement only, and by definition, it's the highest point or peak of the wave. Um, we'll explain more in, in class when we draw diagrams of this. The next is trough. This is also only a part of a transverse wave movement and by definition is the lowest part of the wave. Um, when we do the drawings in class, this will make a lot more sense. Amplitude, now this is where it gets to be having things in common. This is part of transverse and a longitudinal wave movements, so they're in both. Um, in transverse, it's the distance from the resting line of the wave to either the crest or the trough. And in class, we'll draw these and you'll get to have a better explanation of what they are. But with longitudinal, it's the measurement of one full compression. So it depends on which type of wave movement will be how you find amplitude. The next part is wavelength. This is both longitudinal and transverse wave movements. 
In a transverse, it's the distance from one crest to the next crest or one trough to the next trough. Um, they'd be the same distance. It doesn't matter which one you use as long as you use one and the one directly next to it. However, in longitudinal, it's the measurement of one compression and rare fraction together. So it's the beginning of a compression to the end of the next rare fraction. That would be wavelength. And once again, we're going to do this in class, and I think drawing these will help you have a better understanding of them. Frequency, as we talked about in class, is how often you frequent something, but by definition, it's the number of wavelengths that pass a given point over a given period of time. And that time is usually one second because of how fast waves move. Frequency and wavelength are directly related, and the next bullet will talk about how they're directly related. As one goes up, the other one goes down, meaning a high-frequency wave has a very short wavelength, but a low-frequency wave has a very long wavelength. And these are used for both transverse and longitudinal. The next is compression. Now, like crest, this one's only a part of a longitudinal wave. And by definition, it's the power of the wave that is compressed or closer together. And with uh, longitudinal compressional waves, it is known as the amplitude. This is why longitudinal is longitudinal or compressional, because compression is a part of the wave. And the second part that is only for longitudinal waves is rare fraction. And this is the part of the wave that is stretched out, extended, or expanded out. And what that's demonstrating is it shows the release of energy. These are 13 words that you need to know. So by definition, I would make flashcards of these and start practicing these. We will have vocab assessment um, later in the unit, and the, all of these words will be on that vocab assessment. Um, all right. Thanks for listening.